I'd like to spend some time this time talking about pedagogy, and the magic of the mind. Now, content certainly is an important part of what we're going to be teaching. You must have the content in place. You can no more teach what you don't know than you can come back from a place you've never been. But content is not the only thing that's important in teaching. There is a certain amount of pedagogy that must go with it as well. Now, we have with us some volunteers to be on camera, a biology, a physics, and a middle school teacher uh, who are going to assist in this uh, process as I try to discuss the ideas of pedagogical content as well. To use course content, I have some puzzles that I'll have up here, and we'll ask uh, our teachers to, to respond. What do you think the puzzle means as a way of teaching? And I'll try to explain how I use these and what it means uh, as a teacher as we try to solve these problems. What about this one? What do you think it is? Head over heels in love. Head over heels in love. Have you seen this before? Mm -hmm. Yes, you've seen. Many times students will come to our classes with content already in their minds. They've seen some of what we're going to be doing and they have an idea of the content that we're going to be teaching. They bring with them some knowledge and we want to use that knowledge as well. And it's awful nice to start out with something easy. You know, to get the students understanding what's happening and to go along with you so that starting out with something that they can solve is a nice way to begin. So I'll get rid of that one. How about this one? Singing in the rain. Singing in the rain is exactly right. Now, you were very quick to come up with this and not so quick on some other. What, uh, can you describe how you were thinking or what you may have seen in this one to try and solve it? I saw the two ings in raisin. Yes, raisin. Although it's not spelled correctly, this is often what students will see. They see something that looks familiar. And they try to make out of what looks familiar. They try to make out of what looks familiar to them the rest of the content. And so when they see something that's like what they've seen before, they begin to construct knowledge around that. And if we're not careful, that knowledge that they construct around just a portion of what we want them to learn, they construct knowledge around that that's difficult to get rid of. So we need to help them see what's in here. There's another, another thing that students often I don't know which students, and I don't want to know why they think of these things, but some students will see the gin, and another gin, and sin, and I don't know what else, but sin, and gin, and gin. What the student brings to you, you have to deal with. And so if that's the first thing that they see, we have to help them understand that singing in the rain is probably the best answer for this particular puzzle. And not that it's the only answer, but it is, I think, the best answer for this. Now, in order for you to have gotten this answer so quickly, there must be something also in your background that you're bringing to this. What if you'd never heard of the song, Singing in the Rain? Would it have been as easy no. uh, to get that? And so, depending upon the student's background knowledge also is important in this as well. So, the way that one goes... Adding insult to injury. Excellent. Adding insult to injury. Now, you notice this is a little bit different strategy than the other two are. A little bit different strategy. Not all of the content that we teach is going to have the same way of being solved. They're going to have to work a different way. Solving a stoichiometry problem is useful, but it's not the only kind of problem-solving technique that we'll be teaching them. Uh, they'll be learning other things as well. Stoichiometry problems is probably the more difficult one. And once they get that under control, then maybe we can go on to some other things, thermodynamic calculations and things like that that are difficult, but not impossible. All right, adding insult to injury is this one. And the way that one goes. You've developed a kind of strategy, maybe beginning to generalize into how to solve these problems. So I might use this as a test. Scrambled, scrambled eggs. eggs. Oh, yes, scrambled eggs. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is this is not exactly, exactly, no pun intended. Well, yes, the pun was intended, <laughs> all right. But it's not exactly the same strategy. It's not exactly the same problem, but you've been able to create a general way of solving problems. 
And that's the way I try to teach as well, having students repeat back something that I've told them or a problem that they've already done doesn't really test their knowledge. It tests perhaps their recall, but not their knowledge. And so when I test, I want to give them something slightly different to see if they can take what I hope they've learned and apply it in a new situation. That's how I know when they've learned. When they can take the content that I hope they have learned and use it, identify it, apply it in another situation. That's all right. It's not necessary that they get this one. That's fine. There's something that's going on here, though, and I can see it in some of the students' minds as well, that they are trying to solve this problem, but they don't get it right away. And that's on purpose. This is probably the most difficult one of the pile. And so we'll just make it go away. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that they've stopped thinking, and that's the important thing. I raised a discrepancy, something in your mind that you're continuing to work on. And we may go on to other kinds of things and other problems, but that will always be back there wondering what that one means. Now, hang on to it. We will come back to it. Okay? We're not finished with it, but that's important. It is the most difficult and requires four levels of thinking before you can solve it. This is good. I know that the director says not to let there be dead air time. But I'm urging you as teachers to let there be dead air time. It's, it is uncomfortable. I understand that. It's uncomfortable for you as the teacher. It's uncomfortable for the student. But they are thinking. And if I don't allow them time to think, but immediately give them the answer, or if somebody blurts out an answer and I immediately recognize that as the right answer, then all of the other students stop thinking. And I want everyone to think because many times there are more than one answer that is acceptable. There may be one that is the most acceptable, but others are equally valid. So have you gotten the chance to think? And this is? A step backwards. A step backwards. Now, there is some content in here that a student might see, pets. And once this, this word pets is established, and A, ugh, it's, it, you've got to reverse your thinking. Again, the pun is, is intended. You have to reverse your thinking and think of step rather than pets. But the familiar pets word starts a student down a path that may be difficult to recover from. You need to make sure that the students are thinking the way we want them to think, even if it's the reverse of the way they normally think. So a step backwards. And once they've picked up that strategy, this becomes... Horseback riding. Horseback riding becomes an easier one to solve. They've learned the strategy different than the other strategies, but now we're applying exactly the same strategy as the previous puzzle. A horse backwards, just as the word step and pets was backwards. But this doesn't have that content of actually being a word. So I think this is perhaps a little bit easier even. Horseback riding. All right. Let's go to a different kind of strategy again. This is maybe easy. Canceled check. Canceled check. Now, not everyone recognizes that right away. Canceled checks are disappearing. You don't really see them anymore. And so that may vanish from our understanding. Canceled check. So if you've applied as you see a different strategy in solving this than you did some of the others. Now we're looking at the shape of the word. Okay. So you've got that. This is easier. Jaywalking. So once again, you've developed a strategy, being able to apply it in new situations. This is not all that much different. It's not a very big leap from a canceled check to jaywalking. It's the same thing. I really haven't challenged you. Growing old. Growing old. Growing old. Again, much the similar strategies we had before. Growing old is the idea here. Well, now they're easier, and we're no longer solving problems. This is not a problem-solving situation now. It's simply drill doing it over and over again. Now, maybe you've heard the expression, practice makes perfect, but it doesn't. Practice makes permanent. Practice 
makes permanent. If you practice the wrong thing, you'll get really good at doing the wrong thing. So we need to practice, yes, some practice is important, so that we make the perfect permanent. Ah, students have a math anxiety. I know this is becoming a buzzword, but it is true. A whole different portion of the brain is being used to try and solve a problem that has numbers in it. And students are afraid, some of them, are afraid of numbers. They immediately get that deer in the headlights look when you bring out a problem with numbers in it. I can't do that. I can't do it if it has numbers. Well, this has not only numbers in it, but it requires some other content knowledge that may not be there in order to solve it. But once you've got it, it will make sense. Do you think you have it? T for two. T for two. <laughs> now, I love that expression, and I hope the camera was able to get that, because it's exactly what I wanted to see and what I always see in students. Once the answer is given, even if you didn't get it right away, once the answer is given, oh, yeah, that's perfect. That is what it is. They, they accept it, even though they didn't come up with it themselves. Someone else brings it forward. Maybe sometimes it's even the teacher that brings it forward. But when the right answer appears, it's obvious to them. Ah, yes, that is what it is. And so there is value in having somebody else explain it, but there's the great value when you discover it and think of it and agree with it and accept it. More numbers. And that's difficult. Now, this is an odd one. Yeah, it's the odds. Odds. <laughs> odds, odds. And see, sometimes a teacher will want to give a little bit of a hint in a direction and help them out with a little bit. Odds. Oh, the odds are against you? Odds are against you. Well, the odds are against you. So once again, once it's explained, and we look at the right thing, instead of concentrating on some other, well, these are increasing... Uh, somehow or other, and these are well, all kinds of things, uh, prime numbers, uh, oh no, that's not prime, oh my goodness, uh, oh, math anxiety takes over and I can't do this problem and I give up. So maybe a little bit of a hint, even in the sideways, a back door helps them solve the problem. Blood is thicker than water. But the physicist knows what plasma is. <laughs> that's a state of matter. <laughs> a state of matter. And, and water, well, that's the chemist. Yeah, okay. Uh, what prior content do I need to solve this problem? And so a student would be bringing in maybe some other ideas. And I don't know that, you know, that, that, that this is the right answer, but it seems to me that blood, plasma blood, is thicker than the water, when it's probably the best answer to this. But you're bringing in some content knowledge that I depend on you having if you're going to solve this problem. Now, what happens if you don't have that knowledge? Then I have to be sure that I transmit it to you somehow. Either I give it to you or I create activities or situations where you can learn it. But you have to have that content background before you can solve this particular puzzle. It's the same thing, same thing in our classes. Ah, hmm. Bridge over troubled waters. Oh, yes. Bridge over troubled water. Oh, well, that's pretty bad. I mean, I think that's the right answer, but how do you get troubled water out of that? I don't know. Uh, all right, bridge, Golden Gate Bridge. All right, bridge over troubled water. I'll accept it. I'll believe it. Somebody may interpret this as being troubled water, and if that's what you want, then okay, this is bridge over troubled water. It's not a, a perfect way of representing troubled water, but I don't know the perfect way to teach some things. And so I have to depend on, all right, let's just accept it. That's the way it is. Well, accept that, and when we accept that and, and come, become comfortable with that, then we can move on, and, and this concept can be used. Even though initially, ah, yeah, all right, I'll believe it if you say so. Some of the things that we teach, the students just simply accept on faith. 
I've been down this road before. I know what this means. And trust me, you're going to use this later, that kind of explanation in class. Don't be afraid of that necessity. And there are things that the students just have to accept on faith. This is an entirely different strategy now. This is split second timing. Now, I just gave you the answer there, and then I see general nodding and agreement that, okay, yeah, that's the answer. Once again, I tell you how to think about a problem. You apply that method that I give you, I show you the answer, and now you see, instead of seeing Tim, or ing, whatever that might be, and, and timing, we look at the position of the words and what's happening with them, and I'm showing you and giving you another strategy than we had before. Split second timing. Split second timing. Now that you've learned and we've discussed that strategy, it should be easy to do this one. Fly by night? Fly by night. Maybe it's not so easy, <laughs> but the strategy is still the same looking at the position of the words, fly by night. Again, if that's not a phrase that you've ever heard, it'll be difficult. You know, we depend, in chemistry at least, on students learning new words, just like in a foreign language. But in teaching chemistry or really any science, learning a new word is only a part of what we do. In a foreign language, you learn a new word for a concept you already have. I learned the word casa, and I know what house is. But in chemistry, I learn a word, stoichiometry, and I have no idea what it is. It's a brand new word for a brand new concept. Moles? I thought I knew what moles were, but it's something entirely different now for you. Oh. So in a foreign language, it's probably easier than it is in our courses in science. So keep that in mind as well. All right, fly by night. Again, using the strategy of looking at the location of the words, this one is? Love at first sight. Love at first sight, indeed. Okay? So we've got the strategy, love at first sight, looking at the location of the words. All right. Oh, this one is not the same strategy. In fact, if you try to use the same strategy, you get confused and it's entirely, oh, it's so frustrating. Can't get this one. But you will eventually. How many ones are there here? Six. Six. So we have six of one. And half a dozen half of another. Half a dozen of another. Six of one, half a dozen of another. And if that's not a phrase you've ever heard, that doesn't mean a thing to you. All right. I never heard of moles before, but if that's what you're going to be talking about, I can accept it. Everybody seems to agree. Six ones, half a dozen, another. Six of one, half a dozen of another. All right. Let's move on. I got the idea. I will do it. Whatever you say, sir. Okay. My students would like this. And those who've learned to solve puzzles and apply different strategies at different times, we go back to some of the strategies we learned earlier, apply them now later in the course, and finding out that what we have here is an A in chemistry. An A in chemistry. <laughs> okay? in chemistry, the strategy that we started with, looking at the position of things within words. So we want to go back and review the things that we've taught so that those skills remain sharp, that they can still use them. Okay, and A in chemistry. Well, we left one to come back to. Have you thought of an answer yet? Maybe not. I know that they don't want a long wait time here, and so I am going to start us through it. There are four levels that have to be solved before we can solve the entire problem. Our course is that way. We need to know this, and then we need to know that, and then we need to know this, and finally put it all together and all of this. And so what we have here is a good fairy, bad. a bad wolf, ugly an ugly the duckling. Good, duckling. Bad, and so <laughs> this is the good, the bad, the and ugly. the ugly. <laughs> Our courses are good. We don't want them to be bad. Sometimes they're <laughs> ugly. We do have things to teach. We have ways of teaching. Content is important. Content, though, is, is like the score 
of a concert. It takes the artistry and skill of the musician to bring the concert to life. It takes the artistry and skill of a teacher to bring the content to life. Thank you.